to welcome to this session on human energy and the power of organizing. If you remember, well, we have manifold challenges and facing uh, manifold challenges as a species that could put our species survival at risk. Do we have the organizations that can sustain our survival? Uh, people don't seem to trust that we do. And uh, we've seen that trust in leadership is declining. So that many of the organizations that we seem to have are really like not fit. So we have comedic relief like The Office or Dilbert. And, uh, and we see that energy, human energy, is actually uh, very low. That very few people are excited about work, bring their whole self to work, are engaged at work. And that's sort of been on the, well, relatively stable, but it's a, it's a global trend uh, that only three of uh, 10 American workers are engaged, which is in comparison quite a high number. But still, that makes you wonder, like, what's happening? Are we not able to create organizations that uh, can tap into all of our energy? So Albert Einstein said that problems cannot be solved with the same mindset that they created them. And so if we wanted to have organizations that can address these issues that we're facing, then we need to rethink it. So the whole notion in the set of the, uh, of the first story, second story, and third story, uh, I'm trying to integrate that here in terms of that, uh, well, the first story really is at its extreme, a story of fatalism. We are doomed. We cannot do anything. So maybe we can laugh about it. We create uh, these stillbirth strips or the office, etc., etc. The second story is, well, it's a story of at its extreme of nihilism. We, we can do anything that we want, but we seem to be uninspired about any kind of direction. So anything goes. Um, that nihilism and is oftentimes represented as cynicism, nothing matters, <laughs> and, and everything is attributed to some kind of ill will. And so it's not worth to spend our energy on that. In fact, I see many of my students uh, very much drawn to this nihilistic perspective, cynical perspective, and, and who can blame them? Well, we do have a third story of who we are, and we can choose that. And, and if you look into the history of some of the organizations that are created that appeal more to many people, that actually tap into the positive energy, uh, is that they were created. They were chosen to be different, and, and they inspire us in many ways. Many of my students say that those are the organizations that they find they want to work for, et cetera, et cetera. So they tap into human energy in a much different way. And uh, we've studied those organizations and they exist. They're very much on the margin and they're increasingly getting more attention. And they increase in the amount uh, uh, every year. Social enterprises, B corporations, et cetera, et cetera, are showcasing that it's possible. It's possible to create positive energy, tap into this energy. Uh, of employees, of human beings overall that want to see a better world. Why does this work? It's, it is something that just taps into more of the positive human energy, uh, that employees prefer organizations, um, that employees expect that organizations such as business will take a lead to drive changes that uh, that companies should be taking on these social justice issues and uh, that yeah investors prefer those organizations over others that many of the employees are much more engaged there so with that the perspective that is shifting i would say is is what we can call from an economistic model where really maximization uh, of power status and um, wealth is, is the goal um, towards a humanistic model where it's really the creation of conditions of survival, of well-being and flourishing. And that requires two things in terms of managing, leading organizations that allow us to be in a space of a safe and just operating zone where human energy can be present 
and renewed. And the first part of that is that the intrinsic value of us as human beings is honored and protected. And the second part of that is that the planetary boundaries, the conditions of our survival are respected. And then we can sort of create all kinds of organizations that allow us to live in the safe and just operating zone. As I said, many of these organizations are being created right now, uh, maybe not fast enough, but they're also underlying and connecting to this, to this hopeful perspective that uh, yes, we're here to survive, we have survived, and we can create a better world. While that sounds idealistic, this is ultimately uh, the, the message of Taylor de Chardin, that that human energy is there, and we actually can play with that, create that, and it's our responsibility to do so.